just lift your hands and honor the Lord this morning. Lord, we honor you in this house for your goodness, for your mercy, for your loving kindness that you've extended to us. What a great day this is, Father, to be in your presence. We thank you, Jesus. Come on, worship with us. I just want to speak the name of Jesus.
pursue Christ, we are maturing in our life in Christ, which means we're growing in strength and, and we're uh, stronger to depart from iniquity and we're it, it's a process going on. So for this reason, we've got to realize that departing from iniquity requires of us to uh, more than just a simple profession. It is a daily walk, a daily battle, a daily attack against the things of darkness. Amen. It's a daily attack against the powers that try to overwhelm us and overthrow us. Amen. It means a, a daily battle against the flesh and its desires and its pursuing Christ. That's why the scripture says in Matthew, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and everything else will just be added unto you. It'll fall right into place. Amen. So we've got to realize that we find help in the Lord as we flee ungodliness and we pursue Christ, amen, we can find wonderful blessing. And part of the uh, rewards of that in our uh, weapons, if you will, in our arsenal is this, that we can repent, we can have humility, and we can have faith on our part. And if we have those things, then we can find forgiveness, grace, and mercy and strength from the Lord. Amen. Amen. We go to Him with repentance and humility and faith. He comes to us with forgiveness and grace and mercy and strength for our to, to give us help in our time of need. Amen. So realize that you must seek Him. Amen. And if you seek Him, you will find everything you need. Amen. Everything you need. Think of it like this. Notice what the children of Israel went through. Let me just give you some scripture. I love this so much because this was just in my daily Bible reading. Crystal and I read uh, the, the Word of God uh, every year. Uh, we, we just join together and read the same um, Bible schedule. And this, this one in particular was, I think, Friday. Get this. Deuteronomy 7, verse 17 through 23. God said, you may say to yourselves... These nations are stronger than we are. How can we drive them out? Verse 21, he says, Do not be terrified of them, for the Lord your God who is among you will drive out those nations before you little by little. You're, you will not be allowed to eliminate them all at once, but the Lord your God will deliver them uh, over to you, throwing them into great confusion until they are destroyed. I thought he was going to win all my battles in an instant. I, amen. Don't you thank God for those, what I call lightning bolt moments when he just comes down and heals, boom, right there. Or he just comes down and, and delivers right there. Or when he just comes on the scene and just makes the difference right there. But sometimes he brings victory little by little. Little by little. Amen. That ought to encourage somebody knowing that God sometimes chooses to accomplish His purposes in our lives little by little ought to tell us that we, when we're feeling that we're living in repetitive failure and repetitive disappointment and, and, and repetitive uh, heartbreak, amen, but God is telling us, I'm delivering you little by little, day by day, battle by battle. 
Amen. From strength to strength. Amen. From faith to faith. Amen. From mountaintop to mountaintop. You just keep hanging on. Little by little, victory's coming your way. Deuteronomy 8.18 says, Remember the Lord your God. He is the one who gives you power to be successful in order to fulfill the covenant he confirmed to your ancestors with an oath. He's the one who gives you the power to live the life he's called you to do. Amen. He's the one that, that fills in the gaps. Amen. 2 Corinthians 7, Paul said it in verse 1, because we have these promises, dear friends, let us cleanse ourselves from everything that can defile our body or spirit and let us work toward complete holiness before, uh, because we fear God. Amen. So depart from iniquity. Uh, then, he, then he says in our text, to become a vessel of honor. The great reward and the benefit of purging ourselves and cleansing ourselves, as the scripture tells us in verse 21, is that we can become vessels of honor in the house of God. The church has some vessels or people who are like gold and silver. But let's be honest, the, the church world also has people who are like wood and clay. They're, 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 they're those that dishonor Christ. The church is a mixture of people. Some are good, some are bad. Some are true, some are false, some are genuine, some are counterfeit. Some are clean, some are dirty, some are pure, some are tarnished. Some are clear, some are stained. Some illuminate, uh, illuminate light and some illuminate darkness. Amen. You can see it all throughout the world. There are, are those who claim to be of God, who claim to be a voice of God uh, in, in our world today who are not the voice that I recognize. Amen. Amen. Am I talking to anybody? Just because the news says this person said it, it's okay. Then it's okay. No, 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 no. If that voice don't match the same voice I've been hearing all these years, then I, I, I beg you to watch out. Guard yourself. Amen. Because there's a lot of uh, voices that try to, to be the voice of God that are not the voice of God. So be careful. Keep, let it line up. If it doesn't line up with the word of God, run from it. Amen. Therefore, we've got to choose if we're going to be a vessel of honor or a vessel of dishonor. We've got to cleanse ourselves to become honor, a vessel of honor. We've got to uh, allow the Lord to cleanse us of those things that would bring dishonor to him. To name a few, uh, our uh, sinful behaviors, uh, profane words and uh, things that are, are ungodly like that, filthy talk and, and unclean conversations false beliefs that lead us and others astray. We need to cleanse ourselves from those things so that we can be vessels of honor. And again, what does it take to do that? Let's, let's talk about it right quickly. So that we can be set apart or sanctified. That means sanctified to be holy before God. Set apart to be holy. Three quick facets I want to show you concerning sanctification uh, or, or concerning holiness rather. There's justification. Amen. Say it. Justification. When I was a kid, they told me to say it like this. It's the word justify. It's just if I had never sinned. Justification. What's a great word. Just if I had never sinned. That means when I show up to the Lord in my sinful state, in my ungodly state, and I kneel at this altar or I bow my head in prayer to ask His mercy and His forgiveness, I am justified. That is what is called positional holiness. In other words, God instantaneously declares you holy at the very beginning of your faith walk. Amen. How many remember when you first got saved? You were still messed up. Amen. But in that moment you gave your heart to the Lord, you were instantaneously declared holy. Amen. I love it. In a moment we were declared holy. So when we're saved in that very moment, we are on our way to heaven and nothing can stop us now. Hallelujah. I don't care if you've been serving Jesus for 35 years and somebody else just comes and been lived an ungodly life and gives their heart to, to Jesus today. Both of us are walking out of here with our heads held high because we're on our way to heaven. Amen. Remember the thief on the cross. Jesus said, today you're going to be with me in paradise. Today I declare you holy. Today I give you cleansing from your sins. And today you're going to walk through the streets of glory with me. Hallelujah. Today. 
today, today. In a moment, he's declared us justified. We are fully qualified to make heaven our home as soon as we believe on Christ and receive him as our Savior. I'm qualified. Then there's that second part of holiness, a sanctification. It's what's called actual holiness. This is a, a process, a lifelong process. Brother Larry, you still on that path to holiness? Oh, yeah. Amen. Brother David, you still? Amen. Amen. Sister Priscilla, you on that pathway to holiness? Still on that one? Miss Thelma, we're still going. Still going. It's actual holiness. What does that mean? It, it means that what is, it's a process that's bringing into fruition what was declared instantaneously when we got saved. William Menzies and Stanley M. Horton wrote this in a, in a book. Uh, they say concerning the, the, the subject of sanctification, that which marks the true perfection of a child of God is not his arrival at absolute sinless perfection, but his upward aspiration. The moment you turn your eyes upon Jesus, you are on your way. Woo! Oh, I love it. Amen. You are on your way. The moment you look to him. Notice what Paul said in Philippians chapter 3. I count not myself, brethren, to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those which, things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Amen. God is calling me to maturity in Him. Yesterday's knowledge is not adequate for today. I need more of Him today. Amen. The wonderful fact is that God begins with each of us right where we are and he leads us to where he wants to take us. Amen. So don't get discouraged because you have not yet arrived. Amen. You take a, a encouragement with Paul to say, I have not apprehended, but I'm pressing on. Amen. This world has come against me, but I'm pressing on. Amen. This world is getting heavy for me. The cares of this life are too much for me at times, but I'm pressing on. Amen. To an upward way. Yeah. I wish I had a memory like Crystal. I'm pressing on. The upward way. New heights I'm gaining every day. Still praying as I'm onward bound. Lord, plant my feet on the On higher. Amen. Amen. I'm pressing on. I'm getting closer. I'm closer. I'm not there yet. But I'm not where I was. Amen. I'm getting closer. It's, it's actual holiness. And then finally, there's the, the third aspect there of holiness. And that's glorification. Justification, slates wiped clean. Sanctification, it's, it's, it's coming. We're getting there. Amen. We're, we're growing in, in godliness and holiness. But glorification will come at the end of our life. And those people who have remained true to the Lord in their relationship with Christ... When we reach this work of grace, we're going to uh, be able to see something that, that is going to be in an instant, that everything that we had, uh, that was declared over us at the moment we got saved and all those things that we were working for, amen, we are going to be permanently uh, made holy without subject to failure. We're not, there's never going to be another chance for failure, amen, when we're glorified. Paul said it here in 1 Corinthians 15. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be all changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead in Christ shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. Amen. So Paul goes on and says in Romans, For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Amen. All this has been worth it. Amen. In that moment that we are glorified. Amen. We are stepping foot in heaven. Amen. Standing beside Jesus. So pursue righteousness. He says, how there, there at the end of that of that passage in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 22, flee, flee youthful us, but follow righteousness, faith, charity, or love. And peace with them that call on the name of the Lord. So pursue righteousness. That's right standing with God. Pursue faith. That's reliance on God. Pursue love. That's having a love for, for God and for his people. 
and then pursue peace. And he said, do that with others who are following Christ. So in other words, join with other believers. That's why it's so important that you're here today. Amen. Because you're coming together to follow Christ with other people who are following Christ. You're joining with believers who are pursuing righteousness, faith, love, and peace. Amen. We find strength in godly relationships. Amen. We need each other. Amen. Come on. I said we need each other. You, you, you need to stop listening to the devil who said you, you're fighting this battle all by yourself. No, you've got a brother and a sister next to you. Amen. You got somebody across the room that's been there where you're at and they're, they're praying for you and they're helping you. Amen. They're building strength. And, and, and there's just something wonderful about getting together with God's people and finding an encouragement and finding a help and finding a strength in each other. If you believe that, just stand on your feet. Amen. Turn around and hug somebody's neck next to you. Amen. Shake a hand or two next to you and said, I need you. Amen. I'm here for you. Amen. Woo, we need each other. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap of praise today. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.